friends and welcome to the second episode of Wargaming from Zero, a new video series from AK Interactive. Today, the main topic will be the importance of a good base coat and we'll see how we can alter the colors using oil paints. So if you are here to learn new techniques or just want to see how we progress with this project, follow me. We're back in the studio and, as you can see, our dreadnought is exactly where we left it. Now is the time to apply the base coat. In our case, we will be using the dark green grey color. And this will be the color upon which we will build up the painting of our miniature. For that reason, it's very important that this first coat of paint covers the miniature perfectly. Don't leave anything out. To ensure this, you should be moving and turning it around so that the paint can reach all the crevices and there's no part left unpainted. Remember that as this is the first step, it's also one of the most important ones and therefore you should be careful and pay attention to all the details. You can see that we have applied this first coat using an airbrush, but keep in mind that there are other options at your disposal, such as the different primer spray paints that you can find in the catalog of AK Interactive. Next, we will start with the highlights. And for this step we will be using the gunship green paint mixed with the color from before, dark green-grey. Whenever we're going to highlight a miniature model, it's convenient to first try out the paint and mixture we've prepared on a surface of your choice, such as a base. This way we make sure that the jump from one tone to the next is not too aggressive. And remember that if you want to learn more about color modulation and how to use it on a more traditional model, you can check out our Modeling from Zero series. Finally, if we want to make the color a little lighter, we just need to add a bit more gunship green. Of course, you may want to follow your own path and perhaps you prefer a sharper difference in tone. In that case, you can always add some drops of ice yellow paint to make the green color more intense and the light more extreme. Now we will use the camouflage elastic putty. Although it will be perfectly possible to paint the shoulder pads without it, using a paintbrush, we wanted to show you the advantages and the usefulness of this product. As you can see, it's very flexible and it allows us to cover the miniatures so that we can paint very specific areas and keep the rest away from the airbrush's aim. On top of that, as the name suggests, it's a very helpful product for making camel. And best of all, it's reusable, so you can use it repeatedly on different projects. So once we have applied the putty, we can proceed to paint the shoulder pads, for which we are using the black paint. As you can observe, this product allows us to pulverize the paint from the airbrush in all directions, without needing to worry about damaging the modulation we have worked on before. Next, we will use the rubble black paint to highlight the shoulder pads. We apply it in the most prominent areas and the edges. The highlights are very subtle but they break the monotony of the black paint. After we have applied the product on the shoulder pads, it is very easy to remove all the elastic putty, as you can see here, and the model underneath is completely intact. So now you know this very useful and versatile tool that is also reusable. Personally, we believe that it is an essential tool that should be on the table of each and every modeler, whether you're more into historic modeling or science fiction. Afterwards, we can paint the rest of the parts with a paintbrush, although we should be careful and make sure that the coat we apply is as thin as possible, so that we don't add too much texture to the paint. If we cover any of the green parts with the black paint, don't worry. Pick up a clean brush dipped in water and remove the paint. Now we will need to apply the gloss varnish, which will dilute with acrylic thinner, because the next step is to place the decals. So we will prepare the surface to ensure it's completely smooth 
and we can move the decals and place them in the correct position before making their placement permanent. And to do this, we'll pulverize the gloss varnish all over the model, independently of where the decals will go, as this step will help protect our dreadnought. Then we'll pick out the decals. You may notice that the decal sheets we're choosing from are not the ones that are included in the Horus Heresy set. The reason is simply to have a greater variety and make the dreadnought stand out from the rest. After adding a drop of water, we'll place the Eye of Horus on the pectoral plate of the dreadnought. Once we have adjusted the position, we'll proceed to remove the excess water with a paper towel. Following this simple process makes the application of decals very easy. And now we only need to spray the model one more time with the gloss varnish, to avoid any silvering of the decals. That unnatural shine that may occur if we don't apply this varnish, followed by the matte varnish so that our decals placement is completely fixed and the decals are integrated perfectly. As you can see, the decals are perfect. And we're back with the gloss varnish. This time we need to gloss coat the model to prepare it for the subsequent application of the different oil paints as well as washes that could affect the acrylic paint. We have prepared a selection of oil paints on a piece of cardboard, as the cardboard will absorb the oil. The oil paint sets that we are using are the fantasy and sci-fi and the mapping technique. The color variation technique is very simple. We just need to make dots all over the surface using the different colors. Then, with a flat brush with soft bristles, we'll go over the surface, blending the different colors together. It's okay if the first time you try this the results are not adequate or are not what you're looking for. Keep in mind that oil paints take longer to dry. They are very workable and so you just need to keep on blending and repeat the process, adding on more different colored dots until you achieve the results you want. In this case, as you can see, we've created a very exaggerated tone of purple on the shoulder plate, which we weren't convinced was the right choice, so we added some dirty black color to imitate grease. By doing this, the colors seem better integrated, but we keep the purple-black undertones. After doing a quick test on one of the legs of our dreadnought, we've decided to go ahead with a turquoise paint mixture for our color variation. The paints come from the fantasy and sci-fi set. Specifically, we're using turquoise lights, ghost grey and starship filth. Just like before, we'll place the paints on a piece of cardboard at least an hour before using them, so that the material can absorb the oil and they won't appear so shiny when we start working with them. This step, removing the oil from oil paint, is very important. When it comes to painting, the process is the same as before. We'll add turquoise dots on the upper part of the leg, the green color in the middle and the darkest color, in this case the starship filth, will be at the bottom. We do this on all the plates, plate by plate. This method can be a bit lengthy, but it will allow us to keep the base green with the additional turquoise tone. However, it's not just a single color anymore. The new color is made up of different shades, making it more visually interesting. It's not so flat as with the previous highlights. It's very important that we don't get too crazy with this step. Remember that our intention is not to do anything related with weathering, dripping, chipping or streaking grime. Our goal is simply to give a more chromatic variety to our model. Let's leave the rest for the next video and focus only on the color variation. When it comes to the colors we are using for this step, keep in mind that depending on the chapter of the Space Marines or the army we are painting, we can choose from many different colors or ways how to do this. 
but in this case, the turquoise and green tones represent well the sons of Horus, and on top of that, in our opinion, the results are very appealing. So, we are continuing this adventure all over the dreadnought and keep on altering the color. While working on the areas where we've previously placed the decals, we should be more careful and spend more time on blending so that the decals are not covered completely. However, you don't need to worry if you've never worked with oil paints before. You'll quickly discover that they are very easy to work with and just like we mentioned before, it takes a long time for them to dry. So if there is any error to fix, we will be able to do it without any problem. When we have finished applying the turquoise tone all over the surface of the dreadnought, it seemed like a good idea to add a bit of black color at the bottom of each part, so that's what we did, and this is the result before moving on to painting the metal parts. After giving the oil paint enough time to dry, we'll coat the model with satin varnish. And then, as we said, proceed to paint the metal parts of the dreadnought with black paint. And this is where the magic truly begins. When painting a model, there will possibly come a time where you don't know how something will turn out or what the final result will be. If the oil paints did not convince you, after this step, after painting the metal parts of the model, you will see that our figure will start to appear more like what we originally had in mind. So let's get to it! Here you can see all the metal parts painted black, and next we're using the gunmetal paint on the parts that we want to give a more silver appearance to. When working with the metallic paints from AK Interactive, it's recommendable to dilute them with about 10% of water and respect the drying time, avoiding to use the brush on the same area twice while the paint is still wet. Now all the metal parts have been painted using the gunmetal paint, but they look a bit boring, so why not take it a little further? So, to continue, we'll need the rusty gold paint. As a suggestion, when painting metals, it's interesting to use different tones for the different parts. This will make our model livelier, so we recommend you give it a try. Just like here, after painting some parts golden, we've mixed it up using the copper paint for the back. And then we've created a wash with black, burnt umber ink and of course some thinner. This will help darken the metals and create shade, which will give volume and depth to the paint. So why not to create your own washes to save money and be able to control the amount of pigment applied to each part. If we're not happy with the result after one coat of the wash, we can apply another where necessary to achieve a greasier, dirtier aspect to imitate what the gear and equipment would look like after battle. So remember that for washes you can create your own mixtures or simply check out the options at AK Interactive. In the next step, we'll show you how to make your own pin wash using the following paints. Starship Field sepia and engine grease, all from Aptailong 502. And of course we'll need some white spirit. We'll pour a drop of each of the paints in an empty bottle or a container and then we'll add the white spirit, which will be approximately three times the amount of the oil paint. As an example, if we have a drop of each of the three colors, which would be 3 drops of oil paint in total, we must add 9 drops of white spirit. We shake the mixture very well and you can see that when applied to the model, the mixture runs smoothly over the surface and towards the gaps and the lower parts. 
Even if the process looks questionable right now and the surface seems a bit dirty, you'll quickly see how easy it is to remove the excess product from the dreadnought using white spirit. We'll need a somewhat sharp brush, we'll dip it in the white spirit and remove the previously applied mixture from where we don't want it. This way we'll leave the exact amount of white spirit we want on each part. As you can see, it's a very simple process that will take your models to the next level. You don't need a dreadnought to try this technique. We recommend you try it on a Space Marine and see for yourselves how great it will look. So this is what the dreadnought looks like right now and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, which is a very exciting one, as the weathering is coming up next. We'll see you soon! Well friends, now everything's ready for the most exciting part of the painting process of this dreadnought. In the next episode we will talk about the weathering and we'll show you many different techniques that you can learn from. So if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the AK Interactive's YouTube channel and follow them on your favorite social media to stay up to date and don't miss anything. I'll see you the next time!